This is the story of how I made this music video. For a hundred bucks. Keep our memories on replay. Wanna come back, but not today. Look at my heart and look DK. Wish that you could save the day. Ooh, now it's time to grind. Not right now, but I might make time. She told me that she loved it, but she feels it in the spine. Ooh, nah, nah, nah. Ooh, nah, nah. Ooh, nah, nah, nah. Okay, so for this video about shooting your first music video and how I shot my first music video, I wanna talk about a few different things. First, I wanna talk about how to actually get your first music video find someone who will let you shoot for them, how much to charge for that if you're gonna charge, how to keep the shoot affordable so you're not losing money by shooting your first music video, as well as how I actually shot my music video. So I'm gonna show you the behind the scenes of how I set up my lighting and then how much to charge going forward since you have a music video under your belt now. So if any of those sound interesting, I'm gonna put timestamps to where each of those topics start. If you're looking for a certain thing or if you just wanna get the full ropes of how to shoot a music video from point A to point B, stick around. Regardless of if you're an amazing filmmaker, unless you've shot something really similar like maybe a dance video or live performances, if you have those, maybe you can charge more. But if you're completely new to it, don't charge a lot. You wanna get one solid video in this specific niche to show for your work. There's a lot of different clips and things you can pull from that to show in the future, but you don't want to be overcharging for something when you're new to it. You could even go as simple as $100 or even $50 if you're just trying to document that, hey, I got paid to make this music video. It's up to you and your own kind of level that you feel comfortable with. For me, I would say stick around the $200 to free range. I don't think there's any point in your first shoot to really go a whole lot over that, but just use your own kind of gut feeling on if you're at a level where you feel like you can deliver for you know, half of maybe what you would charge once you have music videos under your belt, or if you should just do it for free and then go from there for your pricing. Either way is great. So actually getting hold of someone for a music video is fairly easy, I'd say. There's a lot of artists out there. It's just a matter of looking for them. So for example, if there's small artists that you listen to already, that's a great place to start if they're anywhere nearby. The main way I would suggest is sending DMs, emails, phone calls, things like that. So, you know, going to different artists' Instagrams, sending them messages. And you know, this is definitely better if it's someone you actually interact with, you like their music already, you like kind of their style in the first place. Uh, Cause you don't really wanna shoot a music video for something you completely hate. Like if you hate metal music or you hate country music, don't shoot those. Like maybe if down the line, somebody's offering you the right amount of money, then consider it. But for your first video, you'll probably wanna shoot something you actually like. So for your very first one, you want to message the person with, you know, something that grabs their attention. Like, hey, your music is incredible, really big fan. I really enjoyed this song, this song. You know, you remind me of this, this. You know, just genuine compliments you notice about their music. And then on top of that, I think you should make it clear in the first place, like, hey, I really wanna shoot this music video for you. I'm new to making music videos. Uh, I'm a filmmaker, here's a film I made before or a video, you know, show your quality at least so they know what they're getting into. And then say, you know, if you're going the free route, I'll shoot it completely for free. Let's make this happen. You know, something quick and to the point. And if you are trying to charge for it, show your work and maybe have a little bit of a discussion, but say, hey, I haven't shot a music video before. I wanna do it for, you know, a way more reduced price than I actually charge. I've been doing filmmaking for however many years, but because I need my first one, I'll only charge you X amount. So you've messaged the artist you wanna work with about their song, if they wanted a video, and you got them to say yes. You know, in between now and the shoot, you are going to wanna to talk over the ideas, what they want for the music video, what you're thinking, what you think is possible within your guys' budget. And then from there, when you know kind of what it's gonna look like, you basically figure out how you're gonna shoot it. Now, you're gonna to need to know what your artist wants first, because if they're wanting this huge production with cars, you know, they want crazy drone shots and you don't own a drone, you know, those are gonna be limitations you can't do unless they pay you more. You need to get uh, their ideas written down and discussed first, but once you have that, basically you're gonna be pitching a very uh, contained story. So I definitely suggest uh, when looking for an artist, you try to find someone who kind of aligns similarly that doesn't want, you know, this huge production with crazy cars and maybe drone shots if you don't have a drone, you know, those are just gonna add to your expenses uh, and you don't have the budget for something like that. 
since this is my first music video, probably your first music video, you don't want to be shelling out to go pay for a studio to shoot for two hours. So as you can see, this music video kind of takes place in two different spots. I have these darker shots that are kind of blacked out backgrounds with colored lighting that was actually shot in our garage. Yes, this garage. It may not look like a lot, but it's super easy to transform any sort of space into a studio. Later on in this video, I'll show you how to get a setup like mine, but you'll keep expenses low by basically having a grounded story with, you know, locations that you already have. So shooting at your home, shooting at a parking garage. That's what I did for this shoot. I shot at a parking garage, which was, I think, two bucks to actually park there. And then this garage with a black sheet for the background, two can lights with some colored bulbs, and my ring light with a cutout colored file for like schoolwork put in front of my light is all I really needed to achieve this look. Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna actually have to stop right here. I wanna explain how I actually met Rosie, the artist I worked for for my music video. So funny enough, my cousin Peter and his wife Gracie, also my roommates in Virginia, you'll see them in a video next week. They're, they're pretty cool, they're pretty cool. Anyway, Gracie was actually walking around and Rosie approached her, told her to check out, you know, his music. Obviously he's trying to get his music out there. You, you'll see artists always do this, you know, especially starting out or, you know, just trying to grow your following. Tells her about his music and gives her his Instagram to, you know, listen to the music. And she actually ended up liking a few songs, showed us a few songs, and we actually really liked it too. So this led to me a few months later just being like, man, I still haven't shot a music video. I really want to get one done. Who do I know? And I was thinking of music I liked. And so I was like, dang, let's just, let's just go for it. So I got Rozzy's Instagram and I sent him a DM. And within a day or two, he sent me one back saying he wanted to shoot. The music video was on. We set up the shoot within the week. We were going super fast. We talked about what he was looking for in a music video, talked about what I was looking for, and we just planned the shoot and made it happen. So if you like rap music or you just kind of want to hear what more of his music sounds like, I have Rozzy linked down below. You can check out his YouTube. Wherever you listen to music, you can find him. Check it out after this video. Don't leave this video. Keep watching. Now that you know how I met Rozzy, let's talk about the budget for this shoot. Oh, and one thing, before you hit me with the, oh, Jake, I don't have a Canon ADD, a stabilizer, just stop. I've shot on budget gear for years. You just have to find solutions. Here's a few. If you can't get the drone shots, film footage from the top of the parking garage to have that city view. If you don't have a nice camera or you don't even have a camera, you just have a phone, use your phone to film it. You could get a lens attachment or you could just shoot it just straight off your phone depending on what you're shooting on. So what, the background won't be as blurry and it'll be a little less cinematic. You can still get a good result, especially if you're using other apps and you're exposing correctly. Oh, and for the stabilizer, just use a damn tripod. That's what I do for most of my shoots. So I did decide to use a stabilizer this one time, but it's not required. Cool, so with all that out of the way, let's get on to the actual budget. So for the shots in the parking garage, I had to spend about five bucks in gas to actually get there and park. Paying for parking was about $3, and then, you know, I did use my Canon ADD and a stabilizer for the actual final shots, but like I said, this wasn't required. You shoot on any camera you have and a tripod, because I actually shot it through before on a tripod, but I wanted a little more motion, so you could shoot handheld or use a stabilizer, but I suggest using a tripod, which will cost you about 18 bucks. So with that said, the shoot in the parking garage comes out to only $26. Super cheap, super affordable. Now let's break down the shots in the garage. Okay, the biggest part is gonna be lighting here. This is really what's gonna bring up the budget a little bit. You're gonna need a lamp. Now if you have any sort of lighting already, sweet. If you have a lamp in your house that you can straight up move or adjust the angle of the light, you can straight up just use that. But if not, it's gonna be about 25 bucks for an adjustable one like this. Along with that, I really suggest getting two can lights. As you saw, this is what I used. And these are just so handy for shoots. Like I've already used these on other shoots since then and they've been super, super helpful. So that's gonna run about $12.94 is what I spent exactly. You can find these at Home Depot, Walmart, wherever. And then of course you're gonna need some light bulbs. Okay, one thing I learned buying gear for this was I bought color changing light bulbs. Now this was a really cool idea at first, but the light bulbs actually required Wi-Fi. So I would have to set them up in the house, then bring them out to the garage 
and plus once I did that I couldn't really change the settings of the light because it wouldn't be connected to Wi-Fi so it was just a huge pain and I would honestly suggest just buying one solid color light bulbs these are like three to four bucks maybe five at like Walmart uh, it'll be like solid green solid blue solid red whatever you're looking for it's honestly cheaper and it works out better if you already have color changing bulbs and they don't have this Wi-Fi problem then maybe use those but for me I would suggest going the cheaper route with just a solid color bulb now this one's optional if you are going with the colored bulbs but say you have a light kind of like mine or one that you just want to change the color of the white bulbs you already have this is colored file folders it sounds weird but taping them in front of your actual light source is super super cool and gives you the color you're looking for along with that you're gonna need a black sheet you know you may actually just have a black sheet already or you can go somewhere just like walmart it's gonna be about 10 bucks or you know a little cheaper duct tape you're gonna use this to tape up your black sheet you probably have tape laying around but if not it's like five bucks you could have a speaker already you could buy a speaker but just something to play the music so you could sync it up later Oh, and you're going to want scissors for cutting out like the file folders into the right shape or cutting tape. And dude, if you don't own a pair of scissors, like, are you okay? What's, who hurt you? And that, ladies and gentlemen, gives us our grand total of $85.94. Now, obviously, keep in mind, there is gear that you could get. There is some things you may need, like an ND filter. But I'm just trying to show you that you can get a really high quality or nice looking shots for a music video without breaking the bank. It was something that I just tested out on the whim and it's something you can do. You don't have to follow this step for step. You don't even have to go for the same look I'm going for at all, but just try to keep the mindset that you can make a nice music video for really cheap. So with all that out of the way is actually how I shot my first music video. I contacted Razi, made sure he kind of knew the quality I was going for. I sent him kind of mood board examples of what I wanted. So a few screenshots just online of colored lighting with that red and blue look saying like, hey, I think we could do something cool like this. He really liked that. I got some of his ideas. And so basically we went back and forth on a few different ideas. So, you know, this was pretty simple planning. The whole, you know, idea for the story is just grabbing the full music video all the way through with a dark sh setup with colored lighting. For this, I basically went to the garage, hung up the black sheet, and then I set up my key light, my main light, which is the ring light I've showed you. Take the file folders I had bought, uh, cut them out to the shape of my ring light because I didn't actually have the time to order on Amazon like a ring light gel that would fit. We were trying to get this shoot done pretty quick so the music video can go out quickly. Can lights have a cheap way to hook the lights onto the wall. Just put two on the same side with the red light and those gave me my colors. Now, obviously it's not that simple to just set those up, turn them on and you're good to go. There's a lot of playing around with the distance my tripod and camera were from the actual background how far the lights were from the background so they didn't bleed onto the black and then playing with just the right ISO so I didn't get a lot of grain and stuff. The lens I used personally the most for this was the 50 millimeter 1.8. You know, I would hop in front of the camera a few times, see how it looked on me, kind of the range I had in the frame because you know, it didn't, we didn't have that much room still. It's still in a garage. It's not like you can go everywhere in there, but I made sure I had enough range so we could get some movement while keeping Razi in the actual shot. And for these shots, it was a matter of just taking our time and shooting it multiple times. So Razi showed up. We, uh, you know, played around with the exact uh, focus for just a second. Played the song through three, four, five times, maybe more. And basically just got the full song with, you know, a tight close-up, kind of something like this. We did a wider shot. And then I had him try out a few things with, you know, a little lower energy, trying kind of a side profile was pretty cool and just messing around a little bit, but grabbing the full song all the way through just so we have that to cut in between. Another thing is we did actually try out uh, separate outfits for it as well, just to get a little variety in the shots. And that was basically it for the first day of shooting. Uh, and we were only really planning two days to shoot. So then came the next day, we met at the parking garage we had agreed on. This one was a little more straightforward because it was just bringing the speaker. You can't really set up too much of the shot there. Just plan the right time where lighting wasn't too harsh. It was a bit more of a cloudy day. We used a 18 to 55 millimeter with an ND filter. I had my Canon 80D on a uh, Ronin S so I could kind of track uh, all of his movements pretty well. Uh, this way, you know, I'm keeping the focus and getting a little bit of that like kind of action in there. So for these, we did wide shots as well as close-ups. I think the close-ups look really cool because you get the blurred out kind of city background. And we ran that through with separate outfits as well to again, add a little bit of variety to our shots. And really the last few shots I got were, 
you know, we had gone through the song fully with the two different setups. And while we were at the uh, parking garage, we decided to go to their elevator actually and just try out a few different shots. So we got him coming out of the elevator, tracking him as he's walking, you know, through the parking garage to, you know, where we shot. And it actually looked really cool, along with him looking out over the city at the end. Yeah, that was kind of just a improv that looked cool because we wanted to try it out. And those are really all the shots I had. I also did fly my drone up once they left to grab that kind of uh, shot you see at the intro of the downtown city look. I think it looked pretty good too and added kind of a little more personality to the video itself. So if you want to see the full music video, I'll have it linked down below. But for now, let's talk about what to do after you've finished your first music video. To go from here basically is how you're going to charge in the future. So, you know, you have this music video under your belt, you have the visuals of a music video, and hopefully it turned out good, high enough quality, and your client liked it. You made the necessary changes needed that they wanted, whatever it is. But from here, you want to figure out how much to charge. Now, a lot of different people are going to say different rates, uh, and this is very subject because it depends you know, maybe where you're shooting, uh, what type of music video, the production they want. But in general, I'd say for a video of that caliber, I would charge something like five, 600. Now, you know, it's up to you. And if you're trying to maybe crank out a lot more of those and you think, you know, you can do a simple, just like production, like say maybe the colored lighting I do, just do a production like that. Uh, each time, maybe you just want to charge 300. It's really personal preference but I'd suggest not underselling yourself there because you can still make a good amount with, you know, clearly the good quality under your belt. Now with that said, if it's a little bit higher production, like, you know, they kind of want to tell a story or they want to shoot at a certain location, that's when you're going to have to start deciding like, hey, this is more dependent on this location cost $300, but you know, I got to value my time and effort at the 500 I already set and you know, I need this little bit of equipment, so the whole shoot's a thousand. It's really dependent on you talking with the artist and figuring out together what they're looking for. One thing I left out of this video was the editing process. It would have probably made this video over 30 minutes. So if you would like to see a breakdown of how I edited this music video, leave a comment down below letting me know. All right, and I think that's all I have to share when it comes to making my first music video and trying to help you guys make your first one. It doesn't have to be overly complicated and it can be really, really fun if you already enjoy music a lot you have artists you like it's kind of a dead giveaway that this is something you should try this music video has been one of the more fun shoots I've done recently as a filmmaker this just gives me another avenue to kind of branch out my work get new clients while also giving me somewhere where I can be a little bit more creative and have some more creative freedom so if you do actually end up trying to make your first music video or even just implement some of these uh, effects or ideas into a video, please share it with me. I'm really, really interested to see what you guys make. Tag me on Instagram, at the Jacob Bun, or even shoot me your video link uh, on YouTube or really wherever you have it, because I really, really do want to see it. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be posting weekly videos on filmmaking and photography. I'll see you guys next week.